Okay. Is mine on? Cool. Great. Hi, I'm Brian. Uh, let's talk about particles. Uh, so I wrote a library called Elm Particle that makes particles in Elm. It's very literally named that way. And today we're going to build this demo that's behind me. We're going to actually build these fireworks today uh, all together. So first, let's talk about some goals. First, I want you to get excited about particles because I'm really excited about particles and randomness and, and art and stuff. Um, so I want to get you excited about it too, and I want to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to do this, because I think it's kind of useless to say like, go get excited, but it's extremely hard. <laughs> so we're going, to make a, we're going to make this easy for you too, I hope. So what can we do with Elm Particle, and, and how do we do this? A lot of you have probably seen this demo. I posted it on the Elm Discourse and all the Elm spaces, because it's like, confetti, it's fun, I like it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep turning around, and it's going to be extremely awkward, so deal with it. Um, <laughs> So we have four basic functions when we're doing something like a, uh, a burst like this. So we have a data, which is generating some data. We'll fill in that type hole later. Um, in this case, that's the sort of confetti particles. Uh, then we have a particle generator that wraps that data in the, um, the stuff you need to do the physical simulation of the particles. Then we have a burst, which, because we don't just have one, we have a list of them. And finally, we have a view, which takes a single particle again and uh, turns that into some SVG. So the concrete types here look like we have confetti here. Uh, it has squares, the little ones, and streamers, the longer ones. The little ones have a color. Uh, the big ones also have a color, but they also have a length. Uh, so we generate that randomly, so we get a generator of confetti, we get a generator of particles of confetti, we get a generator of list of particles of confetti. You see how these build up. Uh, and finally, we get a particle confetti to an SVG message. Cool. So we're going to use this pattern, and we're going to make fireworks. So uh, <laughs> I did not expect that. Um, so we're going to make, in particular, the top firework here in purple and the bottom firework here that's uh, red and green. Uh, I want you to notice a couple of things about these. Let's just look at this for a couple of loops. So they have different colors, first of all. One of them is all solid color, and the other is a mix of colors. Uh, the second thing is, when they first burst, they're white, and then they turn into the color that they're going to be because of like whatever chemicals they're burning, right? Um, fortunately for us, we can just use like colors and not have to worry about burning things, which is uh, nicer in a historic building. Uh, <laughs> and the third thing to notice is that uh, when they're going very fast, they appear to stretch because of the, uh, the shutter in the camera. It happens in your eye, too, because of an afterimage uh, persistence of vision. So we're going to make these. Um, let's start off very basic. Press ESC to exit full screen. Cool, I hope that goes away. Yay. Um, so we're going to have the code here on the left. And then on the right, we're always going to have this uh, particle demo. Right now, it's boring. I'm sorry. We're going to make it much better. So we have our sparks. We're just going to call these individual little things in a firework a spark. Pardon me. Um, so we're going to have a generator of spark. Then we're going to have a particle starting at a given x and y coordinate so that we uh, explode all of the firework at the same place. We're going to have a firework, which is the list particle of sparks. And then we're going to have our view, which is particle of spark to SVG message. Now, normally when you're making these, you would jump back and forth between the particle and view and particle and view, et cetera. Um, but for the sake of time here, I'm just going to go all the way through the generator, then all the way through the view, and it's going to be fine. Right. So how do we generate a spark? Uh, we're going to have a random uh, spark here, which is always white, very randomly always white. Um, we're, we're going to get to something a little bit more complex later, but we're just going to have very boring generators for now so that we can get something predictable up on screen. So we have our spark, which is always white. Then we combine that into particle. Uh, you don't need to worry about understanding all this code right now. We're going to go over it. Um, we get a particle by passing our generator of data into particle.init. That wraps everything in a particle that doesn't have any opinions about where it is or where it's going or what it wants to be in life. Um, then we give it a location, which is constantly that location that we pass in, and we get it a lifetime, which is constantly 1.75 seconds. Uh, we have to give them a lifetime because otherwise you would be simulating particles forever and rendering them on the screen forever. Uh, you really want them to kind of expire. Fortunately, this also gives us a nice timeline uh, for animation, which is quite nice. Cool. So let's make this not boring, okay? Uh, oh, sorry. Missed one thing. Firework is boring also. <clears throat> 
we have a uh, list of one random particle at 900, 500. So everything is constant now because they're randomly always the same. Uh, so let's make them randomly always different instead. So what if we had 100 particles in a firework and they were exploding in a circle at random speeds between zero and 200 pixels per second? That looks like this. We just have more configuration function in this pipeline. We have uh, with direction, which is between 0 and 359 degrees. And we have with speed, which is a random number between 0 and 200. So now we have sort of something that looks like a firework. But we're going to like take this really rough shape that we're getting and refine it until it actually looks like more like our source image. So the first thing we're going to do is add gravity. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about gravity. Well, we experience it. Um, in this case, I'm setting it to 98 pixels per second per second for gravity. You might find a different constant for your application. Second thing we're going to add is drag. Uh, the thing that you feel like riding a bike or a motorcycle, the wind against your face, the pressure, uh, that's drag slowing you down. The faster you go, the more slow down you get. Uh, and in this case, we calculate this with three variables. Coefficient, which is just like whatever. In real life, it's like determined experimentally, which means put whatever it is in a wind tunnel. Um, the density is the density of the fluid we're moving through. In this case, we're just using the density of air at sea level in grams per cubic meter, I think. I just plugged it into Wolfram Alpha and then stuck that in my code. Uh, and then the area is about two. That's the area facing into the wind. So now instead of, uh, here's a before and after, instead of they're just like, hello, I'm particles, they actually look like it's a physical simulation because it's a physical simulation. So. Um, this is sort of our basics. These are the things we need. We need a location, lifetime, direction, speed, usually gravity, and usually uh, drag to get a realistic looking particle. Um, so let's make the, some of those random generators a little less boring. So uh, you notice that our particles, our fireworks just sort of clip out of existence here. And like, while charming for things to just fall into non-existence, I guess. That's like not how they look in real life. So let's make them look uh, a little bit more random. So let's go back to our source material. I'm looking at the, uh, the purple one here, and I'm saying, well, most of them fade out around a center. And then there are a few of them that fade out very quickly, and a few of them that hang on for a long time. Um, so maybe if it's 1.75 seconds, we'll take sort of a, a worse approach here and a better approach. So if I'm going to take uh, 1.75 seconds on average, oops, revealed early. Um, we're going to take 1.75 seconds. So let's just like add a quarter second, subtract a quarter second. So now, oops, also different for some reason. Um, we get a random lifetime between 1.5 and 2 seconds. And now this is like fine. But that's not how it looks in real life. Like they're going out pretty constantly. And that's because the default generators uh, distribute randomness linearly. So this is what would happen if you had like a bajillion samples in nine buckets. They would all end up looking about the same, like about the same number of buckets. But what we really want is for it to cluster around a center. We want it to look like this, like a normal distribution or a bell curve. So uh, you can actually get that in Elm. Um, using Elm Community Random Extra. Uh, but just know that this is like a super important tool for generative art and like particles in general. In simulating a lot of things in real life, you have randomness that is normally shaped and not linearly shaped, right? So if we go back to our, uh, <clears throat> right, the slide's not working. There it goes. Because it's loading a, a 1080p GIF. That's why it's taking so long. Um, so we, we get this sort of normal looking distribution where we get a few of them fade out and then most of them fade out and then fewer of them fade out. So we're just going to change that. Uh, so we have before here where they're sort of popcorning out of existence to after where they have a much uh, smoother looking curve to their lifetimes. Now there's one last thing I want to do in the generator here and I noticed that uh, right now our particles look like what would happen if you heated up two pieces of metal really hot and then smacked them together and you get the shower of sparks. Um, which is lovely, but not what we're going for. Um, what we really want is going back to our source material again. We want something that looks like a sphere. Now, you, you look at this and you're like, oh, that's three-dimensional. Why is that? Like, clearly there's a plane here. Um, this is two dimensions. Uh, I think looking at this for a while, I realized that there's more uh, particles on the outside than there are on the inside, which seems like, oh, that's normal distribution again. But the reverse of normal distribution. We want to have things around the edges instead of around the center. So, uh, so how do we do this? Um, but because we're controlling our speed, we can just control our speed 
uh, and then clip off one of the ends so that our uh, normal distribution just looks like half of this, basically. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, I've said that we're going to clamp our speed between 0 and 300 pixels per second, and we're going to center it at 225 pixels per second and with a standard deviation of around 100. So this means that our fireworks go from looking to looking like, look, this is actually a firework. It's, it's spherical, and we'll get to that more in the view. But we have one last change to make in our generator before we get to the view so things uh, don't get boring. Uh, we're going to change our, uh, what's it called, spark. We're going to change our spark to be from white to being a bunch of colors. Uh, in particular, a bunch of colors here means two. Uh, so that's red and green. Um, you don't see this yet because we're not rendering it because here is our view function. It's an ellipse that's eight pixels wide and tall and is this nice neutral white color. Uh, and we've been going, we got really far with just this like super naive view function that's like it does nothing, right? Uh, and this is actually quite performant, but we want something a little more subtle, right? So let's make it a little more subtle. Uh, going back to our example here, you remember about the, the stretching, the streaking you get with uh, a long shutter speed or the persistence of vision in your eyes? Uh, let's simulate that first, and then we'll do uh, fade out and then color. Right? So to get the, the streaks, I noticed that they, are, uh, they go long and then rotate. So let's make them rotate first. Uh, so to do that, we'll make our particles not circular. We're going to make them an actual oval. And then we're going to start rotating them. Elm particle exposes a helper here called particle.directionDegrees, which, uh, again, it's very literal. It gets the direction in degrees uh, that your particle is traveling. This is actually a really fast lookup because we store it internally as a uh, speed and a direction to do the calculations. So this is just like a getter to get stuff out of this record. Uh, and we just pass that into the SVG transform function. And so now we have like grains of rice exploding in the sky and they, they rotate, which is, um, I don't know, rice is nice, I suppose. Uh, let's make it stretchy, stretchy rice. Um, so to do that, we want to vary our X uh, direction by the, uh, by the speed that we're traveling, which is like, again, between like zero and 300 pixels per second. So we're gonna vary it between zero and 300 pixels. That looks like this. Um, so we grab particle.speed of the particle, and I just divide it by 15. There's no formula to find a magic constant here. I just like the way 15 looked on the screen. So now when they blow up, they're, uh, they're a little longer, and then by the time they get to the bottom, they're a little bit shorter, uh, the way they'd kind of be in real life. Um, one problem that we avoided here that I, I didn't have a separate slide for is you see where it says max four there? Uh, if you don't have that, they'll, they'll turn it a little pancakes and flip over, which is not the look that we're really going for. So you gotta make sure that they get to, at minimum, a circle that you can just rotate invisibly. So let's turn our attention to sort of the colors and the fade out here. Um, we're just using another helper called lifetime percent, which gives you the lifetime in percent. Uh, I like literal names, I'm a fan. Um, and we're saying here our opacity animation function is if you have less than 10% of the particle's lifetime remaining, then for the remainder of the lifetime, go from 100% opacity to 0% opacity. Um, and so this ends up looking like, okay, it looks nice. Uh, you may notice if you've used animation libraries before that this is not like a fancy Bezier curve or anything like that. We're not doing a slow or nice animation. And it turns out that you don't need to do that in this case because we're distributing our particle lifetimes using normally distributed randomness. Uh, so you can get away with a really simple linear animation and it still looks like that really nice fade out over the entire particle uh, just because of the way the dis uh, distribution looks as a, a sum function. So that's our opacity. Now let's make color. Prepare for code. Oh, so much code added, so many green. But look, it's green and red now. Um, so uh, I'm going to scroll here to just sort of get this all in view at once. Um, so we're grabbing a hue, saturation, and luminance value for each of our colors that we pass in. Uh, if you haven't used HSL before, uh, go watch Tessa Kelly's talk later today about color spaces and all the things you can do with colors, and you'll learn a lot. Uh, for now, all you need to know is that uh, luminance, if it's 100%, it's always white. If it's zero, it's always black. So we can fade from white to a color by getting a delta between 100% and the percent we want, which for like 
Uh, red is 58, it's that third value in the triple, and green is 60. So uh, all we do here is just calculate a delta and then pass it into a helper called HSLA that I wrote uh, in order to fit all the code on the screen, honestly. Uh, that just takes a bunch of floating point numbers and gives us an HSLA uh, compatible thing to pass to SVG. So now we have colors, and this is actually like all we need. It's like um, maybe 25, 30 lines of code, I don't actually know. Uh, but it's all, it's fairly compact, um, and this is all we need for the view. It's fairly simple. Um, so what do we do next? We have these like Christmas looking particles, right? Uh, but what if we want particles that are all the same color? I kind of prefer those honestly when I'm at a fireworks display. Uh, so if we jump back here to our generator, you remember how we have a randomly generated color of red and green, we pass that to particle.init, and then Firework makes 100 of them, so we're generating 100 random colors. So to make one color for the Fireworks, again, going back to our source material, we have like our red and green thing down here, uh, but we want the purple thing up there that's just one color. Um, we'll just move that generation into Firework and then pass that one color that we generate into Particle by adding another parameter. That ends up looking like this. Uh, it uses random.and then, which uh, if you've been using Elm for a little bit, you've probably encountered like JSON decoder dot and then, or maybe dot and then, or result dot and then. It's essentially the same thing. If you haven't used uh, random combinator stuff in general, uh, look at uh, Joel Kenneville's talk, Rolling Random Romans. He also wrote a blog post that sort of introduces this concept in a really nice way. It's really helpful. Uh, but for now, you just need to know we're generating one thing and moving it in uh, to all the particles instead of generating one color per particle. So that's pretty much our fireworks. But I do have one last tweak to make in that I've never been to a fireworks show where all the fireworks explode at 900 pixels to the right and 500 from the top. Um, not super realistic. So we're gonna use some normal uh, distribution again here to get something that's centered about there on the screen, but which moves around in, in nice sort of realistic ways. Uh, so all we're gonna do then is grab random.extra.and then three, which just takes three random generators that we pass as constants. Uh, and now we have like a nice looking fireworks display. And going back to the first slide of this talk, that's this is pretty much the code that was on there. Um, there's very little different here except the colors I, I tried to set from our source material. Uh, but if you wanna know how this integrates into the Elm architecture or any of the other details or a few more comments, uh, all of these examples are on GitHub at Brian Hicks slash Elm particle and on the Elm package website at the same place. So you can just go look at how those all integrate and those are also really good places to start from if you wanna experiment with your own particles. Uh, there's streams, there's fireworks, there's confetti, uh, just all sorts of examples for you to play with. So I have a few final notes. That's pretty much it, that's our fireworks. Uh, we've gone from a raw source material to something that looks reasonable in terms of like a stylized fireworks display that we could just embed in any Elm app uh, for almost any browser, like old Internet Explorers, notwithstanding because it uses SVG, but like most browsers will work with this. Uh, so a few, uh, few endnotes. First thing is, like, have happy accidents. I'll just let you watch this. I love this one. So this is what happens with the fireworks when, uh, you remember how we uh, stretched out the x-axis but rotated on the y-axis? This is what happens if you switch those and then don't dampen the power. It just gets this like exploding echidna looking thing. And it's like, it's my favorite. I, I was not expecting this when I was writing this talk, but I found this and I was like, oh wow, I'm gonna make a recording. And there were so many other things that I also found that I didn't make recordings of and now I wish I had. Because like making particles and doing generative art and anything like that is just all about having happy accidents. Like uh, this code that we've gone over in about 15 minutes took me like, eight and 10 hours to make and then make into a presentation. Um, so it takes a while, it takes a while to make the right uh, combinations and finding those is a really fun process. So go have fun. Um, thank you so much. If you make something with this library, uh, I wanna hear about it. If you have questions, I would be happy to answer them either of these places. Thank you so much.